Hi, my name is Raheem Nelson, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use ArtRage Vitae in uh, your workflow. Uh, for me, I like to do still lifes from time to time, and that involves either uh, taking a found object that's in my house, for example, or going on the internet, finding like a royalty free image, of course, and uh, using it to create a painting. Uh, it's a practice that I've uh, done in art school from time to time, and I like to keep it up you know, just for my studies and my practice. So let's get into it. As you can see, I have my reference up in the left corner. It's a green apple photo I got from Unsplash. And you can load the reference from uh, your camera. You gotta give ArtRage access to the camera. Or you can load it uh, from your photos. And you can just kind of import a photo that you can use uh, to trace. Or you can have it in the, as a reference like I have in the upper corner. Uh, Art Rage Vitae has made changes to the pencil tool. We've got smoothing, a noise scale, and uh, the pencil actually kind of corrects the stroke if you set it a certain way. So it's kind of like smart drawing. It's pretty cool that they have these kind of features that uh, you know help you with uh, sketching and uh, making sure that everything looks right. It's just features like that that really set Art Rage apart from uh, the other apps on uh, the market, and it's one of the things that keeps me uh, coming back is that they have these great features. I really just had, always had a great uh, pencil tool. And uh, for the oils brush, you know, I covered it in the last video, the different features that you have, like the thinners, loading depth, uh, gloss on the brush. You, know, you have Insta-Dry, you know, you can either paint wet on wet paint or dry on dry. Uh, for this exercise, I'm going to use uh, wet on wet paint because I really love how the paint uh, just mixes and it comes together. So now I'm going to start painting in the apple uh, using the colors from the photo. Uh, I will either take the colors directly from the photo like I'm illustrating here and you can uh, do that with uh, the eyedropper tool or if you uh, press down with your stylus you can get the color uh, from uh, the apple, you know, the different shades and everything. And it's really good to paint still lifes because you're looking at the light and where the shadows fall. And again, what I really enjoy about Art Rage is that you get the feeling of studio painting, but you've just got it in like a tablet form. So I'm, I'm able to take this uh, wherever I want to go and I can just create art on the go, which is pretty amazing. And uh, they've added uh, so many great features to the oils brush where it's a lot smoother than the classic version. The classic version is still great. I still use it from time to time. But uh, having Art Rage Vita is like a breath of fresh air. Like everything's just like silky smooth and I can just like render quickly, get things done and just be able to move on to uh, the next painting. Like it's really amazing. And as you can see, as I'm blocking in the different shapes of the apple, you know, that make up the light and shadow, Art Rage is smart enough to know which way the strokes are going of my stylus pencil. And the paint is just like blending together uh, by itself because, you know, the, the program, you know, thinks that it's wet on wet paint. You know, I have it set up that way, you know, with Insta Dry turned off, you know, which are in the settings. And I could even just leave it, you know, how it is, you know, with the rough edges. You know, sometimes I like to do that with my paintings. So there's a next step that I'll get into with a palette knife where I'm smoothing out all the, the brush strokes. But uh, one thing I enjoy about painting and also, you know, looking at art, especially impressionist art, is, you know, just seeing rich, uh, broad, vivid brush strokes. And you can get all of that in an Art Rage Vitae, uh, you know, if you're using the right tools and you have some experience with painting, you know, that makes it even better if you have experience with real world painting, you can get more out of uh, the program uh, if you're just coming into it, you know, without having that experience. And, you know, that's not to say you can't get anything out of Art Rage, you know, if you haven't painted before, but if you have that point of reference and you're bringing that into digital painting, like it's even more rewarding. So uh, 
I actually recommend, you know, taking some studio painting classes as well and then, you know, using Art Rage in conjunction. Like, it's just really a lot of fun. So before I forget, I want to talk about layers. I have three layers here. I have one for my sketch. I have one for the paint. And sometimes I'll create a new layer. They're like pieces of tracing paper that you can stack on top of each other. And I'll put one below the painting layer so I can do the background that I'm doing here. And it just makes it a lot easier to just keep things separate, keep things uh, organized so that I'm not going uh, over anything that I don't want to go over. Because sometimes I do want that clean edge and that clean line that's gonna differentiate the foreground from the background and really have that uh, shiny green apple, you know, that luminance that you can see and just have the dark background that it sits on top of like what's in the reference photo. So now I'm gonna get into one of the final steps of uh, this painting and I'm gonna be using the palette knife if you look close, you can just see the colors getting smoothed out and blended in. And uh, I really enjoy this part of the process. You know, you, you put all the time into creating the sketch and then creating the underpainting and then, you know, getting it to a point where you're happy with it. And then you can kind of mess around with the paint and uh, just blend things together. And uh, the palette knife, just like the oils brush, has a ton of options you can use. I usually use uh, just blend paint which is a great option for uh, doing portraits. And I wanted to get a particular texture on uh, this apple. So it's just a good feature as well. And you can see me playing around with the size and the amount of pressure. Uh, you don't want to go too heavy with the pressure. I keep mine very low, like uh, probably just a little above 10, 15%, just so you can kind of keep things even. You don't really want to wash things out when you're blending. You want to have, uh, you know, just a little bit of texture. And, you know, I'm not really going for an airbrush look. I really want to look like uh, the rich oils that uh, I've been trained in, you know, that I uh, create my artwork in. And uh, thankfully, I'm able to do that in Art Rage. So what I would compare blending to is like a push and pull system. Like you paint a little bit and then you blend and then you can come back and then add layers and you can see that I'm adding more shadow, I'm adding more light because some areas you want to stick out, have uh, stick out more than others and others you want to have them set back. Like the background sets everything back, it's dark and then the corner is the apple. You've got, uh, it's light on the right side but you know, a little deeper on um, the left side and you can see the hues of red that are in there, the hues of brown, and then there is uh, you know, got your light source on top. And so it just goes beyond replicating the photo. You know, this is my reference photo, but I'm trying to, you know, just add my own take on uh, how it looks and you know, just have that come through in the rendering. So as I finish up this latest video for Art Rage Vitae, uh, thank you for watching the still life video and I'm going to be coming up with more ideas for paintings uh, and videos very shortly so you'll be able to see just how to utilize this amazing application for all your digital illustration.